I would like to, can you guys hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, this is Waylon. Uh, I would just like to say that I did see the uh, request from expert Lana Snow for the, uh, the landscape fence. I have had a question. I know that they were proposing the eight foot um, tongue and groove, which I think will help. But in that article, it also did say there was the MLV, which is a soundproof barrier. Is that also gonna be installed in the fence or is it just the tongue and groove alone? That's a question I had as well. And then my other question, was, is it gonna be a professional or is he gonna install it himself or, and then just making sure it's gonna be properly installed. The article does speak to, you You know, you can't know in the middle of it and on the integrity of the bar barrier. There's also the insulation caulking that has to be used. So it's, it's a very specific way that you have to do it. So I just wanna make sure that that was all gonna be followed if that was the route that was done. Okay. Uh, Paula, can you answer those questions? Um, I cannot. Uh, I know Pete's on and the applicant is on, so I kind of think maybe we should get a review from Pete as to where we're at with this application, because I know they've met with the applicant and worked out some things, so um, maybe we should kind of let Pete give us an update. Uh, you guys have everything that I have. If you read through it, you know where we're at. Do we want to re approve the minutes before we go farther? Well, I just didn't know if we wanted to finish public comment first or well, we, we can, we, we can approve the minutes and then go back to it. Well, the public comment is for their comment. Now, if we go to the okay. minutes, then we can go into the next agenda item and maybe answer some of those things with Pete and everybody. Okay. All right. Thank you. Can I get a motion to approve the minutes, please, for July 20th and August 3rd? A motion. Second. All in, uh, do we need a roll call for that, or can we just do all in favor? Roll it call. It be a roll call, but who is Roll this? call, please. He's John first. second. Giesler and Culpepper. Okay. Hey, Judd. Yes. Ridsdale. Oh, he's not here. Ducastle. Yes. Apicelli. Yes. Bradenburg. I thought Richard was on. He yeah. is. Beasler. Yes. Culpepper. Yes. There he is. Richard, can you hear us? Tony, can you hear us? Yes. Okay, he's connecting his audio now. He's muted. How do you vote on the minutes, Bradenburg? Uh, yay. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, motion passes. Minutes are approved. Let's move on. Expert lawn, expert lawn and snow update. What do we know? So might I suggest we remove it from table? First, and then we can dig yes, right I into it. I make a motion to remove the public hearing from the table or the expert lawn care to go back into discussion. Second. I second. Uh, do we need a roll call or can we just do a voice? Roll I'll, I'll roll call. Okay. okay, thank you. Culpepper? Yes. Newcastle? Yes. Apicelli? Yes. Judd? Yes. Freidenberg? Yes. Giesler? Yes. If I may, Mr. Chair? Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Smith has uh, provided us uh, additional information uh, from uh, as it concerns last uh, meeting, uh, primarily addressing uh, the parking and the fencing and provided additional clarification on the types of vehicles and where loading and unloading will be taking place. Um, as for the type of fence, um, the gentleman uh, who I believe was on earlier, Waylon, uh, sorry, sir, I don't recall if that's your first or last name, uh, had uh, provided comment also in an email uh, concerning uh, types of fences and such and the decibel ratings uh, that uh, from a brick to a, 
uh, to uh, just a wood spruce uh, fence, what the types of decibel ratings would uh, be um, buffered at that point. Um, so as it concerns the fence, uh, if we're talking about a tongue and groove uh, that is intended to be a fence, then our office usually uh, requires them to be uh, put together uh, by the instructions, by the engineered requirements on how those go to place. We have no other way to judge that. Uh, the other item was, I think that was brought up, uh, was will the sound buffering be put there immediately or will it be something uh, that'll be implemented later if there are issues? I'm gonna have to defer that to Mr. Smith to discuss if that was his intent to see how it goes with the tongue and groove if approved <laughs> and then add the, uh, the sound uh, batting. Uh, later if there is an issue. So if I may, Mr. Chair, may I ask Mr. Smith to address just that one narrow comment? Uh, yes, you may. Thank you. Mr. Smith. Hi there. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, great. Um, I, I do plan on to construct the, the fence myself in, in the exact manner, you know, as it's described. Um, the I do believe that just the tongue and groove would be sufficient. Um, as as for our vehicles, we run normal gasoline vehicles, um, no big diesel trucks like the city plow trucks or anything like that. Um, so, um, you know, I don't I don't see a difference as I are us starting our vehicles or or a neighbor starting their vehicles in in pulling out of their driveway. Um, I I do think the tongue and groove is going to be sufficient as it uh, forms an impervious barrier will block the light and sound um, and, and we did go from six feet to eight feet to try to help that out and as far as the mass loaded vinyl um, that was kind of a backup thing you know if if um, if there was an issue with a tongue groove or or that was thought to not be sufficient, I guess. Um, the, the mass loaded vinyl can be added during construction or after construction. Okay. Are you still there? Oh, my screen went blank for a second. Oh, we're all still hooked up, it looks like. Okay, good. Mr. Chair, would you rather, uh, for, for our purposes, it really came down to the fence and the parking as, as we saw it as outstanding information. Do you want to handle the fence issue now and then take on the parking or go through the parking as well? Um, let's handle the fence since we just talked about it, then move on to the parking. Great. Right. Okay. So as far as staff is concerned, I mean, at this, this, this point, it's a planning commission uh, discussion. I did go out to the site. Um, you know, there is, uh, uh, I think that the adjacent property owner, uh, their structure is, uh, to, um, topography wise, is higher uh, than the elevation of Mr. Smith's property. Uh, there is a large existing uh, evergreen there uh, that is towards the northern northeast uh, corner of the property on, on the adjacent property owner's side. But other than that, uh, did we dive into, would it be ready to, you know, would it be something that, uh, uh, that we'd recommend a concrete block wall? No, not necessarily. We don't have very many of those uh, in the city. Uh, we don't have very many of those in the county. And the only time that they're required between both Shiawassee and Clinton is when there's an adult use. Uh, for to mandate a concrete block wall. So that's that's our input, and I guess I'll answer any questions uh, that the Planning Commission has and defer to the applicant uh, for additional detail. Thank you. I don't have any questions myself. If I read that correctly, versus the tongue and groove board versus a masonry wall, um, or any other type of fence, it it drops at about two extra decimals. Is that what I understood in the paperwork that I read? <clears throat> Down to about eight, is it? Instead of 10 or 60 instead of 80, I guess it is. Decimals. Well, and and uh, the adjacent property owner provided that uh, information. Uh, we haven't uh, verified that or backed it up. And he, he himself acknowledges the internet's a good source um, you know, and, and provided that information. So if you'd like, maybe the adjacent property owner could, 
to discuss that. Uh, Is Waylon so, still so on? To speak. It's breaking up. Can you guys hear me? Hear yeah, I you're breaking up. Oh, okay. Um, so I did some research and you can see on the graph there. So basically what it comes down to, large trucks run about 80 decibels and a wood fence, according to this whole house is gonna block about 10 decibels. There was another wooden fence type on the other thing that blocks about 25, but we're looking at 80 decibels compared to about wood fence blocking 25. So that's why I think the sound barrier would need, need to be done as well because you're looking at 20 decibels up to you know 80, there's a huge gap there. I do. I do believe maybe when you mention large trucks too, um, you know, you're talking uh, diesels and dump trucks and stuff like that. Um, if I may remind again, um, we run normal uh, gasoline Chevy vehicles. Everything's um, well maintained, quiet exhausts on everything. Um, so uh, if we could factor that in on the on the noise thing as well, I guess. Jake, so how many running vehicles are you going to have down there? Um, gosh, um, I, I run, I run two plow trucks for the past, um, uh, two and a half years now. And I think we're going to be in the same boat this year, two plow trucks. And how many go out? I'll probably, um, one, I've been, one. I have, I have myself and one other employee right now. So the equipment you're talking about coming in and out of that parking lot of noise is basically three Chevy trucks and that's it. Air Correct. Minimal. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other comments? Any questions? Anything uh, anybody else wants to bring up? Just to point out that figure shows that a normal vehicle is going to do 60 to 80. So it's, you know, the, the regular vehicle that he's suggesting is going to be around the 80 decibel level unless he's got information to say otherwise. Yes, I guess what I'm hearing though, is that what Jake's planning on putting in is really nothing more than a neighbor would have two vehicles parking in a garage or in, in their front yard, right? I mean, it's not like you're gonna have big trucks, big plow trucks or or dump trucks or semis or anything like that pulling in. Exactly. What's your operating yeah. hours usually in the winter? Is it 24 hours or is it? It's it's 24 hours, yeah. I mean, just like the city, you know, when, when things have to be serviced, they gotta be serviced. We, right. we have to be on it. Um, it, it. We can't really predict time during the winter hours, I guess, right. um, during, during, um, the summer, spring, summer, uh, seven 30 until, you know, uh, seven 30 at night usually. Okay. So Pete, so we're addressing the fence. We're talking about sound. What about light? You said that the neighbor's house was higher. Do we have concerns that lights, Pulling in at 3 a.m. after out plowing would shine in, would, would and, go and over the, a fence. The, the fence, uh, the, it, it, it's not that much higher. And, and that's why I think Mr. Smith went with the eight foot uh, uh, fence there. Uh, there's also no uh, exterior lighting proposed uh, at this time. I guess, uh, you know, that would be, you know, any outside wall packs. That's what we'd be concerned with mounted on the building that would go above that fence. Um, I guess I would also ask Mr. Smith. Uh, an operational question. Um, if he starts plowing at 3.30 uh, in the morning, uh, it's been snowing for a while, he wants to get out there. Uh, what's his operation for getting that truck ready to go? Is it setting out there idling for 15 minutes? Is it pulling it into the barn? How much activity is going on before he has to plow? And how long will that be on the site? Because the truck's going to be out, out until all the plowing's done. So we're talking about, I don't know, uh, what time frame Mr. Smith has for that and how his operation works. I don't know. Don't plow. Um, um, as uh, I'll answer that right now. As for a time frame, I mean, it, it doesn't take any longer than, than a normal vehicle, you know. Um, the plow's already hooked up. You, you grab the keys, you start it up. 
clear your windshields and stuff and you're you're good to pull out you're you're good to pull out of there um there's not going to be any extra time spent there um for any type of reason you know leaving vehicles idling or anything like that i i have one question uh pete i guess to you you might be the only one that can answer this is if mr smith is going to put that fence up and he's not putting a sound barrier on, how do we set it up if, if it's loud or too loud or over the decimal points we're talking or whatever, uh, who's gonna report that or check that? Well, that can, uh, I, I think that'll be dependent upon the neighborhood. The planning commission can always put a condition uh, that you, know, you approve the special land use. However, in, after one season of operation, uh, to report back uh, to see if he's in compliance. You can set a time frame on it um, uh, that if you find that the neighbors have had problems and, and the adjacent property owner, especially through one season, uh, says, you know, hey, this was, here's, here's what happened. My, my children woke up at 3.30 in the morning. He idled the vehicles for 20 minutes, which is an inconvenience for the, for the neighbor, but sometimes these things need to be tested. And you would be able to then at that point, at that renewal period or at that check-in period, uh, ask for additional improvements to be made. I think one season is fair. At least it'll be a way to get, get, to get a handle on the situation. Yeah. And if it is an important situation, it really turns out to be bad. Uh, the neighbor has been uh, very eloquent in what he's put forth. He's been very succinct. He's provided information to the planning commission. If in January, he says, we're, we're not able to function in our house, the planning commission could have also put the condition on there that at any time they can request that the additional sound barrier be added. I don't wanna put the adjacent property owner in a lurch, but sometimes we don't know necessarily how something is going to work out and we don't wanna you know, the, the horse out of the barn, you know, uh, we want some ties to it to take care of it in the future if there's a problem. And we have the same thing with the, with the, as we were going through with some of the marijuana establishments. It's new, we, we, we have uh, other types of uh, vehicular operations in the, in, the, uh, in the city, but most of those are in closed structure. We kind of know, and they have a history. This one doesn't have a history to it. I have a couple comments or questions or concerns i suppose um i didn't look at pricing what is the price to put in the the mass loaded vinyl is it terribly expensive that it would make it hard to do that's a question for mr smith i suppose it it it, it is pretty pricey um, gosh, I think, I think a 25 foot roll, uh, four foot tall. So that would cover half of the fence for 25 feet is around $200. So for each 50 feet of the fence, I'm looking at about $400 worth of mass loaded vinyl. Yeah, that's pretty expensive. It but is. If reading it, it's easier to put in while you're building the fence rather than later. You can do it later, but. It, it is it is said to be easier to do while you're constructing the fence, but correct, it is you're able to do it uh, before or after. Is that construction. something that you're willing to take it all down to put it in and put it back up if we suggest that you need it? Um, gosh, I mean, I would have to if if it's suggested by the city, it wouldn't be an option. Right. Or if it's or if it's necessary. Mr. Smith, how many linear feet of fence are you looking at? Um, gosh, I haven't measured it out. I think it's um, uh, 50, it'll be about 50 long and then 45 out to the road. So about 95 feet, so, I'm guessing. So about 100 feet for four or $500? Yeah. Okay. Well, no, no, you, no, you would, you would, that would cover a 25 foot section for $400. The, really? the, the roll is 25 foot long uh, and four feet tall. Like and, it's, and, it's, and it's two hundred dollars. I think I'm losing, or, or I got bad reception here. Yeah, it's breaking up a little bit. I, I guess my my point is is a uh, hundred linear feet. How much would you say the cost would be to you to do 
the the extra barrier right now? Sixteen hundred. Sixteen hundred dollars. Okay. Yes. Okay, and and let's look at if if we were starting off with just the tongue and groove. The planning commission is putting a stipulation on this to look at in a year. The adjacent property owner is essentially the one that's going to be burdened with having to report if there's issues. Um, you would have to take the fence down to put the, the, the new stuff up. I would suggest that it be considered now because it's going to be your time and energy taking that fence down and, and putting on the, the vinyl stuff later. And it'll be the efforts and time of, of staff and uh, uh, the planning commission uh, to look at it down the road too, when maybe the best situation is just to do it now. I, I, I do understand that. Um, I, I, just, I just strongly feel that it would be sufficient with a tongue and groove as I've described our vehicles and the noise and stuff like that. I really do. Um, but if but if it's necessary, that's something we got to do. I under I understand how it would be much easier to do it um, first um, for everybody else, um, but it's quite a bit of an extra cost as well. And if it's something that may not be needed. Well, I guess I I look at it like the zoning commissioner and myself, and just question on if you don't put it in. And I understand the cost because I, I understand you get a lot of things going. But if your neighbor starts off and doesn't feel it's appropriate and you only have one year and it takes, you know, so much time, is it is the sixteen hundred dollars worth taking the chance that you may not be able to operate it with a fence that way and have to go to something else? If it um, work? Prob probably not. No, I understand that. Um, and, and I guess that raises another question for me. If I was to go ahead and do the mass loaded vinyl off the um, straight from the beginning, would that be permanently sufficient? And, and we wouldn't have to look back on this again? I can only answer for myself, but if you do the maximum that is put out there that can be done, and right. it guarantees a certain limitation. I don't know how, and Pete, I need your help here, but I don't know how we could, other than put a different restriction on it. I, what do you have to say about that? I would say that, that it seems like uh, the applicant has come a long way to meet what the planning commission and the city have asked for. But again, I don't, I don't make these decisions. You could put a restriction on that, but I don't think Mr. Smith wants to do the extra investment. And then a year later, you guys say, now it's a concrete wall uh, with port insulation in the middle. Uh, you know, the, the city is tight. There's been uses like this. We have a new use down there on the other corner. I realize it's right, not right in the neighbor's backyard. Um, he's also very close uh, to property to the to the east. Uh, this has kind of been, you know, this Mr. Smith also provided us, uh, you know, evidence that this used to be a, a service station and, and other items. Uh, the city's in a tight spot with these always. It, it's uh, whether it has to do with on street parking and crowding downtown or it's the impact of a use that's kind of outside the, the downtown. <clears throat> now, Pete, didn't they say that that loaded one would? decimate decibels by 20 to 25 percent that is what mr that's what mr smith provided I, I again i'd let him talk about the details of that okay so so with those details a normal vehicle is at 80 just like the the adjacent neighbor was stating so if if he put that up it's going to drop it down to at least 60 anyways which would be low a lot lower oh. What is, what is comparable at 80 decibels? I mean, I'm trying to look that up. I right think now. a lawnmower is 86. Well, yeah, and if a lawnmower is 86, then it would seem to me a gas engine would be lower than that. Yes. Yeah. So we're talking yeah. for a very, very brief time. If I, I can't, I yell and scream at my kid who's riding the riding lawnmower and he can't hear me. Um, but we can have a conversation <laughs> over a running gas engine. That's selective hearing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and didn't I see something in some of the paperwork that said 80 decibels is like a dishwasher? I mean, the old dishwasher. An older dishwasher, but still, that's, I mean. It can be loud. 
I would be personally a lot happier if we had the fence and the insulation barrier up because then you've done the maximum that you can do with that type of wall. And if it does get it down to 60, I don't know how you can get it any lower than that to start with. I mean, you can't get it where it's not hurt at all. And that would be unfeasible uh, to even think about that. Uh, well, you can't even noise. think about it in that area anyways, Mike, because of all the other bigger building, it's, it echoes down through there. Right. Everything in that area echoes. I mean, it comes way up to my house. You know, echoing up the street. You have the carnival there, and it's echoing right up because it's a valley. Oh, yeah. I realize that. I can hear it at my house when that goes Absolutely. Up. So, you, so you know what I'm saying here is that it's all going to echo, but if it does drop it down, you're not going to hardly hear anything. Right. It's going to be but, like listening to two neighbors down the road mowing their lawn. I mean, you're exactly. going to hear it, but it's not going to be buffling your ears. But <clears throat> Mr. Whalen is definitely concerned about his child, and I understand that. Uh, and Mr. Smith is concerned about his business. So between the two of us uh, and the third, we got to try to figure something out for both. Correct. We do. I agree both way. Like I want to help out Jake, but I agree with the mayor. We need, I would like to start with that and then see how, it but I don't know. Yeah. We got to figure it out. Well, we also uh, Jake. I agree with the mayor that he should do the maximum to start. Because yeah. at least that way we've done everything we can to start. Okay, Pete, here's the big question. Is it possible right now to do a vote through us on requesting to have the maximum done now instead of a year from now? The, I would not take a vote on it as an actionable item. I would take a vote on it as a consensus vote just so you're all aware of what the other ones are thinking. So you're not voting on the actual item. You're just saying, what's the general consensus there? Here's what okay. we're thinking. Thank you. All right. Can we get a vote on a consensus? Not a vote. You're just going to get a consensus out of each person, how they feel. You've got mine. So. I agree with you. I think you should do the max from the beginning because then we're covering all our bases. I agree. So, I yeah. Agree. Bradenburg agrees, too. I think the tongue and groove should be enough with the option of doing the other if needed. I'm not sure it's going to be a problem. I mean, I. I, I so we have one nay, Jeff. All right. I, I think a car running in the next door neighbor's driveway is not going to be an issue. I, I would be, I'm more concerned about the lights shining in at three o'clock in the morning, to be honest with you. Right. And, and, and honestly, Jeff, with the way that they're talking about, if they do that eight foot, if they do the eight foot fence, you know, I agree. I agree. The eight foot fence fixes it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think that'll fix all of that glare and everything coming into the neighbor's yeah. house. Yes. Absolutely. Was, what I was saying was my concern about the business being next to the house with more lights than sound. right up above. Yeah. Absolutely. For, for two picks. The sound. The sound will bounce to my house, which it's okay. <laughs> I have the big portrait right here, so that's going to be a barrier as well. So, but that's okay. Did, did I not see that you had like? 20 spots in there for parking um there's there's actually 10 yes oh 10 okay now Would my nice question is is in the winter as an example uh if yeah. you've got 10 parking spots and only three running vehicles you could use your trailers or whatever else that's not stored inside or you can't store stuff outside but your vehicles in the parking uh, you could park in the front parking spots up by the road and that would uh, alleviate a lot of noise on the back side. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you've got that many parking spots, you've got a lot of room to park right in the middle, possibly in the winter so that the noise doesn't, you know, early morning doesn't really distract people. Exactly. Yeah. It leaves options. And that, that's yeah, you've nice. got some room there where you can move around. Seeing you only have three running vehicles. That was my whole point is that right now you've got three vehicles that come and go out of there. So, right. Well, Mr. Chair, I think the consensus is, is the fence with the thing in it, but that doesn't mean anything at this point. So, right. I mean, I would love to help Jake, like just as a group to save him $1,600. That would be awesome. But we have to think about all the situations and the neighbors. And, and, and if he has to come back and do it later, it's only going to be more aggravation. So you yeah. might as well get it done now. Like, like you said, Mr. Mayor, I'll get it done now. 
I hate the burden, the extra burden and cost, but it could save actually it could save half that money again if you had to tear that fence down and do it all. Yeah, yeah, you know, and this is this is not the first uh, extra burden of cost I've run across in that building. So you know, um, I just I just I want everybody to be happy. I do. I don't. Yeah, I. Uh, you know, I want everybody to be happy and I want to make it right on it on every level I can. So, well, that's good to hear because that's uh, that's a situation we're in. You know, yeah. we're representing the whole city trying to do what's best. And, you know, you're a business that's wanting to not that you're new, but you are moving to a different location for your setting as far as your equipment and stuff. And we want you to yeah. be a success, too, here. So, um and so that's the key where we have to be, but we also have to have to address and answer to the public. And some of your public is sitting right in front of you tonight uh, that of are course. directly across from your businesses and stuff are real close. I live quite a ways away, so you have no effect on me, most likely. But if I do hear you, right. it would have effect on me. But, that, <laughs> I, you know, I'm just saying that as a joke and a funny laugh. Yeah. But that, that's where yeah. I'm at as far as everything that we do for the city as a group. We're trying we have to consider everybody. And that's what that's we're doing. understandable. Yeah. OK, well, I'm glad that you do understand that, because um, like you say, you got quite a bit of investment there and there's always this and that. And not everything works the way we hope it will. But anyway. Right. Mr. Okay. Chair, may I ask one more question of the applicant? Yes. Uh, uh, I do want to make sure that for Mr. Douglas's sake that uh, and I'm not familiar with how this this extra sound barrier goes on that the finished side will be facing Mr. Douglas's yard. So he's not looking at something that's industrial or something that is, is, is not appeasing to a residential lot. Correct. Yeah. The, the finished side will be facing his yard. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So we have a consensus that we can pass on to city council. Well, we'll, we'll do that Let's as part of the, the overall. I think we need to talk about the parking and the, the gravel lot and the gravel. front as well. So okay. That, the, the fence consensus can be wrapped up in the overall motion. Right. Okay. So if, you, if um, I may, Mr. Chair. Let's move on to parking. Okay. Parking. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, again, the, the applicant is now looking at a crushed asphalt. Um, I've seen crushed asphalt put in and be a, a great dust free surface uh, and also not impervious where water is just going to shed. Um, I've also seen it be put in horribly where it just leaves big grooves and tracks and, and it just becomes a, you know, a mess. It hardens in all kinds of different shapes. Uh, Mr. Smith may have the equipment to keep that uh, in, in place uh, and I, that's my biggest concern there. Uh, the other having to also do with parking uh, has to do with the front triangular piece. Um, between what we have in our ordinance and other ordinances that are out there concerning clear vision, it's looking rather difficult to get a parking space in that triangular. Mr. Smith did provide a line there. I went and parked my car uh, there this evening uh, on how it would work. I don't see it as a significant uh, Compared to other corners uh, in the in the city, I don't see it as something significant. However, it's the ingress and egress from that triangular piece. You're either backing out in the street, or you're pulling out right next to the the corner of the building uh, for someone coming uh, north and, and south on on Crumb Street. So, uh, it's an odd little situation. Um, I do notice that Mr. Smith has. Uh, two of the parking spaces in the back labeled as apartment. Um, I'm wondering what his thoughts on there is, if that's to serve more than just the front apartment, if there's intended to be multi-apartments up there or just one big apartment and allow him to expand on that. And then maybe I'll have some comments following that. Yeah. Um, well, what, what, what do you say, Mr. Smith? Hi. Um, um, we have the we have the parking in the front and back uh, labeled for the apartment. We do intend to only have one apartment there. Um, we just we just did three spots because we were unsure about that front spot. But um, what we're looking to do here is is we're really looking to to bring you know convenient housing uh, within city limits. 
Um, and this, this parking spot is, is the only option we have to create convenience for this apartment. Um, you know, imagine, imagine parking around the back of the building and carrying, carrying in bags of groceries, you know, 60 feet down the sidewalk, 40 feet across the front of the building and then up the stairs. Um, it, it creates a, it creates a tough spot. And, and, you know, I have, I have seen in the past that, that there's, there's been an apartment there in the past. Um, there's been a gas station. It's been a store. Um, I believe that there's always been parking there in the front and, and I don't know if it's ever, um, caused a problem, I guess. Actually, to tell you the truth, there's never been parking there since it was a gas station, probably whatever the forties or whatever the store and everything, there was no parking up front. Okay. I mean, just for your knowledge, I mean, I, I'm 66 and I grew up here and went to school here I, and, and that, you know, it never okay. was cars parked there, but when it was a gas station, it was a one pump fill up type of deal. But heck, I think that was in the forties. Yeah. Yeah. Forties or fifties, I think. Yeah. yeah. Or later. Um, I, I, I do also, you know, compare it to, to neighboring properties around um we got you know extreme masonry there with with parking on the point by the stop sign um we have the uh old old mike and sons asphalt place there uh parking right on the corner for the business and uh apartments above um i i just see it very similar as the surrounding buildings you know as, as to what they're doing i guess for parking Uh, I agree. One of the biggest I, concern. Go ahead, Dina. Sorry. Um, me seeing it every day, I think I'm looking at it right now. I think there's sufficient space for a parking spot. I wouldn't say more than one, but if I parked my Tahoe over there, you would be able to see all around it. And if I were to pull out, um, obviously, you just be an adult with common sense, you can pull out and watch. And I think it would all be safe and okay. I know there's restrictions, but I think it's within its, I think it's within its limits to be there. Like, I think it's okay. That's my opinion. Well, you mentioned last month, Dina, something about mirrors for directional sight. Right. I was thinking over on like where the opening for the fence area would be, maybe a mirror there for kids, school kids walking. But over there, I don't know, maybe mirrors would be, that might be a really cheap solution. And Dogs, go. Yeah. But I definitely think there's a space over there for parking, just like for one, for sure. Mr. Chair, may I ask the applicant another question? Yes. Okay. For the interior uh, of the structure there, uh, is your intent just to have the apartment on the front side? There's no, uh, there's no additional improvements going on on the second floor uh, towards the north, towards your stored parking, or would that be for your use, or is it just not going to be used? Um, it's all going to be the, it's all going to be the one apartment, the whole upstairs. They're actually up there right now. Um, I'm getting a roof put in, they're fixing structural stuff in the roof. They're putting a, a new roof on it and, uh, and fixing a lot of stuff up there. They're building walls and, and everything in that, uh, North part to support the new trusses that will be supporting the roof. Um, so it's the whole upstairs so, of okay. the building. Okay. Um, the stairway that leads up on the east side, is that on your property or is that an addition that was put on? Is there an easement or something there? It's always, it's always been there. Okay. I, I noticed the survey stake uh, there, but I didn't see the one towards the northeast corner of the building. So I wasn't sure if that stairway was totally on your property or if it was overhanging on the adjacent property. I don't know if there's some type of easement there or not, but it does show when you look at the map, a triangular piece there. When you, when you look at like the um, commercial zone or the zoning map, I guess I would say of downtown. Okay. Um, as we, we talk about this particular site, this, this is a little tighter than extreme uh, masonry there. If you look out there, they yeah. do have a, a grass or, or, or uh, uh, that's just more of a grass looks a little muddy occasionally uh area that's approximately uh 
and we'd have to measure it. But I think the requirement uh, overall uh, for state guidelines, and uh, Dan was able to, to look into this, was 20 feet from a crosswalk. And there is you know, a crosswalk to go across the street there um, uh, at the stop sign. Uh, so I think that's another concern uh, because this, this, the two sidewalks converge there. It's kind of hard to tell where they are. Um, but if we go from the crosswalk, and that the danger is somebody pulling out of their parking space and hitting somebody at the crosswalk, uh, that there needs to be a 20 foot. And from what we can tell, it's really tight there. Again, I parked my car there and I could see no real problem, but I'm not also parking there when school's letting out or where, uh, when something is going on. What I wondered is there's a possibility there's an option that this apartment could be accessible from the back where the two allotted parking spaces are. Maybe and again, yeah. I know this, this, this is something that encumbers for the applicant additional costs and stuff, but overall, you know, we may have a, a state rule that, uh, that may be violated as well. Is there another? Yeah, because I don't that's figure there? that's twenty feet. No, it's yeah, it's tight. Uh, no, I, I don't think there is either, and I think that there's an eight by eighteen proposed there. Um, but again, from the crosswalk and what what some of the information we understand that that's the difficulty there. I think that Extreme Mason is either meets it or is very close to it, uh, and that as they only they did not concrete all the way up to the tip to where parking would be. It doesn't mean occasionally somebody doesn't park there, but you get my point. Right. I can see it being used possibly for groceries or something and then move, but I'm not sure about the rest. But <clears throat> so oh. I guess I guess what I'm concerned about is if, if somebody does park there, are they you know, is are they gonna get ticketed or something like that? And and I guess um what's the difference of the parking in front of uh, Mike and Sons there along the street? Um, to the crosswalk because I, I believe there's spots right there right next to the uh, sidewalk in front of the building I guess like the rest of downtown uh, that's uh, city parking though okay so right that, that, on that, Street. <clears throat> so is so so could I use the, the parking right there on could, could the parking right there on Crumb Street be used for that apartment um, um, for city parking like them other apartments are above above the um, asphalt place in, in those buildings there? Well, myself personally, um, <clears throat> that was one of the alternative ideas I thought, you know, possibly that it's city property over there that, you know, for emergencies, short times, whatever, they could park over there like the other ones do and then... Uh, that building is free. You don't have any liability issues going on. You don't have any possibilities of a renter hitting somebody because it's going to come back on you and them. That's right. the only thing I see. Uh, I think personally, I'm just talking for me, no one else. Uh, <clears throat> I think we could make alternations for parking and I might be speaking out my backside uh, mm -hmm. to leave that wide open. You got two spots in the back that you've reserved for and uh, Correct. You know, is there a back door to that apartment upstairs? There's not. No. Are you putting one in? I don't plan on it. Well, that's and and I guess I guess that would have changed a lot of stuff um, because they're already they're building walls and supports and stuff for the roof up there. So I don't even know if something like that would be uh, doable now. You know. Well, I was kind of concerned with, and I don't know nothing about it. The fire escape situation being a second story, if you only got one way out. Yeah. Well, there, you know, there, there, what, there, sorry, that's not what we're here for. I'm just saying that that was uh, just a concern I have too. Was one way out, so and yeah. one one way down. But yeah. But I I, just, as far as go ahead, Pete. Just, just real quick, I want to clarify from the crosswalk. It's not parking from the crosswalk. It's the ingress and egress. Uh, that's you know from each point there that the ingress and egress cannot take place within 20 feet of that triangle. So that that's that's more the point. It's not the parking space. So and I and I do want to caution that you know what's what's being done right now. Uh, you know, we have permits for the, the roof and everything. Um, before we go too much farther with, with supporting Joyce and before 
uh, walls for the apartment, we need to get that wrapped up in a building permit, finish this zoning process and get that into a building permit. But it looks like, you know, we have a concrete wall there that would need to be some engineering done, but there's the potential that you could have a rear access. And again, the apartment has not been run through plan review for, as, as the mayor says, you know, the ingress and egress. I just think, I think the parking's out on the front after having additional discussions about ingress and egress near a crosswalk. As for, I agree, um, as for in the street, in front, like he said, parallel, would, is that something that they can just do? Can we put, how do we um, go about making a spot right there on it's the city across road? the street? We won't be able to, we won't be able to put a spot there I don't believe because it's it's all through way traffic in that cornering and you're parking in front of all residential yeah. houses no right on crumb street just yeah go there's like one area that would there could be a spot just right there like right in front of the building rather than in the thing or back in there I don't know I'm just are you talking about facing grant uh crumb street that void area between the corner of the building and the garage door you're yeah. looking at that's yeah. what you're talking about yeah i mean yeah. there looks like a sufficient spot for one or two parking right there rather than in that triangle how would we go about putting one there as the city i don't know i have no i have no idea about any of that but it oh. seems like that would be an easier solution than that triangle, putting one there. So taking what Dean, and I'm gonna ask a question, I may be wrong. So you, Pete, you said the problem isn't where they're parking, it's the ingress egress. So if they pulled up and instead of pulling onto the triangle, pulled up on the road by the triangle in a parking spot, that would be okay if there was a parking spot there. That parking spot doesn't need to be 20 feet from the... There we go, thank you, Paula. But I broke something. Yeah, thank you, Paula. <laughs> yeah. uh, so uh, what we're talking about is crumb seat where the letters and numbers are at, like the the numbers as footage. You're talking about a parking spot basically right in that area. Like where it says M91. Yep, right in there. I see what you're right talking there. about. I personally think if, if the city can do it and if they're willing to do it and planning, you know, all that, it'd be a whole lot better spot than in the middle, out, out in front. Yeah. Where are his doors? I mean, what well, well, your park, garage door opening anyway. and your fence coming out could that car could block the visibility there too. The other thing that you got to look at, Mike, right there is actually parking on the city street for plowing in the wintertime. Right. It can't be there after two o'clock. So correct. Right. So you're not gonna be able to use that parking spot all year round. So what well, about I, I, I do usually take responsibility and clear that clear that area um, very good. I, I don't like to I, I like to keep the snow um, out from away away from the building. It tends to be pushed up against the building instead. Um, so I so I have taken extra care in keeping them spots cleaned out. I don't know if that would play a factor in that or not. Well, where are you taking the snow? Um, I, I was I was pushing it right up in front of 118 Crumb Street, the property to the north of that, up on the curb, which is uh, directly uphill from the storm drain. Instead of running back downhill the other way, or or along the side of the building all the way down to the storm drain, it just seemed like a better spot. Well, uh, the only reason I ask is this: if the city has to come along and move it after you put it there, that's not going to work out too good. Well, typically they pile it up right by that telephone pole there by my building, and then they come back along and move all that stuff with a tractor and dump trailer afterwards. Right. It just, I moved it because it was sitting there melting, and, and it all melts and runs onto the sidewalk, and it freezes up against the sidewalk in the building there, and it creates slip hazard. So I, I just felt that it was safer that it got moved up the road a little bit, um, uphill from the drain, you know. Well, but I, I do take I do take extra care on keeping that stuff clean down there. 
Well, in my book, you're taking the extra responsibility to keep it from being slippery and everything. As long as Dave and them don't have any complaints as far as the DPW with their plowing and so forth, I don't see a problem with that snow cleanup and stuff, what you're talking about. Now, from there, that's another song and dance. But you have answered that question about the snow, and it's a logical answer. So, Are you done with the photo? Uh I can leave it up. It's fine. Leave it up for a couple minutes, if you would, please, because yep. as we move on, it, we might need to look at it. Well, Jake, where is the parking yes. in the back for the apartment? Is it like where the detail not to scale is? It's uh, it, it's directly to the north of it. I don't know if you can see my paper, but uh, there's two spots here for apartment. Yeah. Oh, she's got yeah. it right here. Yep. Right up against the building. Right up against the building. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to orient north. It's Crumb Street. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. And so they'd have to walk down the building. Down the front of the building. Yeah. Around the side down the side and around the front of the building. Yeah. Around the west side of the building. It would be the west side of the building, yes, down the sidewalk on Crumb Street. Gotcha. Okay. Have to walk with your arrow. Do you want one? Mr. Smith, do you plan on any additional uh, garage doors and access points to the structure that exists? Uh, no, no additional. And that's just at the far northwest corner. The, the one the one access door is at the far northwest corner of the building yes okay. and and inside will be stored your plows and things like that that need to be kept secure and and not outside correct storage. correct yeah out of the out of the elements and, and away from you know theft and stuff like that so where is that garage door sorry I don't remember I mean I remember the building but I don't remember the details. It is. It's on Crumb Street, um, okay. northwest is. side. Okay. <laughs> Paula. Yeah. Okay, Paula. I yeah. Paula's just trying to have too much fun. Yeah. I know. Yeah. She is, she's like a laser. <laughs> hey, hey, it's working. So, so that's good. Okay. <laughs> All right, do we need to get a consensus on the parking? I think it'd make, be easier in the long run. Okay. Can consensus, we get a consensus one? Like consensus, consensus for the triangle or for the front, the Crumb Street spot? For the triangle. Okay. I'd just like to add, I think that that's more of a, sta a state requirement to be 20 feet from the crosswalk. Yeah. So I, I think that we're at the dip, we, I think the triangle parking is, is out because of that requirement. Due to state law. Yeah. I, I would think that right now okay. it would be just be the consensus on the parking for out front on Crumb Street. Okay. Because yeah, I'm not sure. That's why I was asking. I'm okay with Crumb Street parking. All right, can we get a consensus, Paula? Call, call them up. Yeah. For Crumb Street parking. Yeah, I'm not taking a roll call or anything. Remember, you guys are just talking about right. it. Right. So you say Crumb Street, you're actually creating spaces on Crumb Street? One. One? One place. And that would have to be dependent on the city and the DPW as far as what their layout things are. But it's okay for them to park there right now and do their business. That's what we're saying, like, it's okay. I mean, if we all can say that. Well, I just don't think that they ever put a parking spot there before because it wasn't ever brought up like the apartments Right. Just south of there, you know, above Mike and Sons and all that. Right. Because that was just somebody's storage building, so they just parked there anyways. Yeah. yeah. So maybe it's nothing that we should even be discussing? It's it's just more or less the census of 
the city just installing one with lots. Well, my consensus is that I don't care that it's parked there as long as it's allowable. Yeah. I mean. And as long as it's not with that, you know, against that 20 foot egress, it's not violating any state laws or even city ordinance or anything like that. To well, my that, knowledge, it so wouldn't be, but. That was the question I was asking before. Could a parking spot be within 20 feet of the crosswalk? Yeah. On Crumb Street? In, no. Crumb Street. I think it's again in, ingress and egress from a spot that's not in the city right of way. So, you know, with this particular uh, property, I don't have enough information, nor do I have any authority under the zoning ordinance to really comment on it. I think the mayor's comments were apt that, that you know, I think this would be a DPW of uh, the city police and, uh, and the city council to know if they want to institute more parking there. But from a zoning perspective, I don't have enough to comment on that. Right, but doing the consensus right now for us to parking out front on Crumb Street is just like parking out in front of every one of those homes on Crumb Street. Right, so we shouldn't, we Where shouldn't even be discussing well, it anymore. I would, I would, I would caution you on when you say like all the other ones, if there's not marked parking spots, I hate to tell everyone this, but you're not supposed to park out front on the street on the side in front of your houses. You're supposed to be parking in a driveway. But this is Langsburg and no one's pushing it. So right. that is something you have to look at is the fact is, is that uh, no, there's not anybody parking any parking spots up and down Crumb Street on most of it. Now there's some in front across the churches and stuff, but so I don't know. That's that's why I think Pete's got the right angle saying uh, we can take a consensus if we want, but it still is up to the city and the council and DPW, I think. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah. the, okay. If, if the planning commission is looking at, at actually concluding this without tabling it again, it could be stated that, that a parking is approved as provided the two parking spots shown as apartment on the site plan. However, if additional parking spaces become available via the city, DPW, and that kind of, of, of action at Crumb Street, then those could be used as well. But those become city parking spaces. Right. They're not dedicated for the apartment uh, person that may, may rent there. So I would still leave a dedicated space in the fenced in area. Well, I'd leave both of them. And then if there was a spot there, you could park there. And that's the same way of going across the other side of Lang Street and parking behind the, what everyone would know as the old uh, massage parlor or, or right. therapy. So Lots. yeah, yeah, behind Klotz is there. Okay. So we nay to the triangle and then move on to the asphalt. Let's move on to the asphalt. And Let's that's up to you folks. We consider it a dustless surface uh, uh, and, and such, but if you know if you think it should be paved, just note that you know paving is gonna require you know repair over time and 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 such. And we've used crushed asphalt and, and other and gravel such as the storage units and such. So your guys' is call. Well, my question is, is when were these businesses come in and when did our ordinance come in that we have to have paid parking lots? Because some of them are grandfathered in. I mean, I don't, most of them are all grandfathered in. If you look at the ones that have been built and finished, such as uh, across the road there, it took them some time, but they got it paid. They got it done, you know? And then the, my understanding was, is the front part is left for maybe a park bench that the city has and some maybe flowers and whatever. So I on, would, on that building on that building you're sorry to interrupt. On that building you're talking about, there is there is gravel parking lot in the back of that building um, where they park trucks and store equipment and stuff like that, extreme masonry. It's uh, up against the uh, new marijuana dispensary property, I guess. And the fence backs up to uh, Dina's house. Right, and and we're we're trying to go a step above that with the with the crushed asphalt. Um, that this stuff compacts really well. Um, it's a dustless material. It's uh, easily repairable, 
And, and the biggest thing is it offers natural drainage to the parking lot. You know, we're, we're not pushing a, a big water wave off when it rains running off the parking lot. It's going to naturally drain like it was like it was meant to do. Well, it does do that, but it also has rocks that come out onto the asphalt and stuff because I have it at my house for a side drive and I got to sweep it every day to keep the rocks off of the, the con uh, asphalt. Hey, Mike, if we're going to yes. keep comparing, yeah. if we're going to keep comparing to the other site plans that we've approved, then I guess you guys might want to table this and get that site plan out and review it and look through everything to figure out we're trying to compare here so that you can have something i mean i don't I mean, you guys have all of the information that he's provided but he's asking questions about what's approved on jimmy's i guess maybe we better pull jimmy's and look at it and then we can come back and look at this again i agree with paul i, I guess, think that's a good idea i guess i'm not asking if that was approved i'm just i'm just stating that that's what i that's what i've seen um so you maybe know, we I have enforce some violation over there if he wasn't approved to park there, and you know, if we're gonna start like pulling out these site plans, I guess we better do that and hold everybody tight to their site plan. I I would I would really like to get uh, mine taken care of. Um, everybody else is aside. Well, then let's deal with your site plan instead of everyone else's. Okay, I'm just I'm just referring to what I have seen and wondering if that's okay for another contractor's establishment. That, that I mean, that place has went up not that long ago, so I, I'm I'm guessing that the same rules would apply to that as would apply to well, me. We would need to Is pull that, that and see maybe where they're parking back there. I know that was supposed to be fenced in, so I'm assuming it's supposed to have a gate on the front, which means that really wasn't for parking. So he's supposed to park his vehicles inside and outside, just like that little front space, I think. So we'd have to pull it if that's going to be a question. But I think what we're trying to say here is, you know, we don't want some issues with the paving or not paving. And I'm telling you what our ordinance currently says. Okay. Could you read that to us, Paula, or... What's that? What our ordinance says? Yes, ma'am. It our says, says it has to be a hard surface. I don't think it says paving, does it, Pete? It says hard surface. Getting to it. Hold on just a sec. Let people in. Here's a line over there. It's in the staff report, guys, what it says about paving. I didn't see it in there, Paula. What item? Oh, let me pull it here. Oh, wait, I had it up on my screen a minute ago. Let me look there. It talks about gravel and layout in 4-1, but I'm not seeing it elsewhere. Still looking? Parking areas with a capacity of four or more vehicles shall be paved and provide adequate drainage. 
The Planning Commission or City Council may permit such area to be graveled in review of the petition for site plan or special land use approval or at the request of the zoning uh, and administrator. Such requests shall be, must be accompanied with, by a detailed use description of the subject area so as to limit the, the use to that area so stated. Change in intensity of use may uh, require paving at a later date. I, I think the thing we want to remember here is we've already turned what was a residential unit into commercial. And so that was residential. And now we're trying to make this work for a commercial space. But that sidewalk there that they're going to be driving all these vehicles over is going to get crushed. And I mean, we need to really think about how we're planning to make this work. If we're going to have all this traffic coming in and out, how many driveways are there? coming in and out of that parking lot. And then they're gonna come in and out of the building. So, I mean, if we're asking them to pave something, then it's because we feel like it's the right thing. So if you guys think it's the right thing to not pave it, then that's up to you. But I think that when that was put in the ordinance, there was a reason for that. Do we do a census for this as well and then move forward? Yes, I think, that, I think that would be a good idea. Let's do a census. And then we can move forward. I think the crushed asphalt is sufficient enough. I'm not as knowledgeable about it as I could be though. So that's just my... Yeah. I mean, I think some of the concern with um, our staff and the DPW were that um, with the traffic coming in and out of there, that the, I mean, I'm, I'm not really sure, at, originally it was considered to be gravel, that that would go into the storm drain that's there. That's what I got back from the DPW. Got it. And which I understand that, Paula, with the gravel, but if they actually change that to the crushed asphalt, you're definitely not going to have as much, you know, as you do with the gravel, you know, it just looks, like you've got the gravel behind clots, you know, coming out onto the road and things like that itself. Right, but you can't, you can't compare what we're doing here to what's behind clots because we haven't had to do a special land use there. Those that was gravel that was that way before we ever started this. I mean, you can't go back now. No, no, no. I'm not stating going no. back to that. I'm just stating because it's gravel, the gravel coming out when you're plowing, it doesn't go as much when it's the crushed asphalt. Yeah, the where's, crushed asphalt. Where's the storm drain in response to where um, you're talking about? Yeah, basically, they I think they're trying to say that because it does set lower or tighter that you wouldn't have as much pushed out in the road when it's plowed. But my consensus is, is the planning commission has made this and, and it hadn't been all that many years ago that anything over, I think it was four that Pete said had to be paved. And that's where my consensus is. If it's going to be done right, it needs to be paved. I know it's an expense, but it needs to be paid. That's my consensus. Okay. So that was, what was that, Alan? Um, I think the crush asphalt should be good enough. That's my consensus. That, but again, like Paul said, the GPW says that it's not, then we, but right now I'd rather save him some money. Right. So now we have the consensus for our three things. Where do we go? Well, I don't think we got a consensus on this. We only had two or three comments. Yeah. I'm I'm good with the crushed concrete or crushed. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Misspoke. Sorry. I was going to say I'm good with the crushed asphalt myself. Anybody else? Yeah, I mean, I think that the paving ordinance is there for a reason. I 
uh, I understand it's a big expense, but I feel like paving is what needs to be done. Okay. So we have three for crushed asphalt and one for paving. Any any other input? Two for Does Mike count for paving? Two for paving. Two for paving. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and Mr. Chair, as, as someone goes to make a motion, they are not obligated whatsoever to follow the three consensus votes. That was just an exercise to see where each other were at. And right. it appears that the, the largest uh, item of contention has to be uh, with the uh, paving the lot or allowing uh, crushed asphalt to be in there. So, so whoever makes the motion can shake it up whichever way they like and then uh, <laughs> go from there. Do we have a motion out there? And we did provide the structure of the motion on the last page of our staff report. Okay. You'll have to add in the extra conditions and clarifications, or I can assist you. Well, I could make the motion, but I'm a minority on it. So somebody that wants everything to fly better make the motion right oh, okay. okay can i do this i make the motion to have him put in the, the fence without the extra sound barrier but pave the space what was that again to build the fence without the sound barrier and pave the pave the parking space yes okay with are you going to put the consensus in if uh, if it's felt or needed that the property owner next door complains or city or anybody that it's got to be fixed? Yeah. Because okay, that was I talked can, about. I can, I can get on board with that and if we put the you know the one year one year restriction on the the extra barrier if necessary. All right, we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second that, Alan. All right. Let's do it. Hey, Pete. Yes. You want to help me out with what's in this motion, please? Yeah, I didn't read it. <laughs> the, the motion would be as provided by staff that the Planning Commission recommends to City Council to approve the special land use and site plan uh, for the property located at 101 Lang Street and 118 Crumb Street. It meets all the, the basic standards. It meets the final site plan requirements. Uh, it requires the fencing to be as outlined on the site plan, which is eight feet and it's tongue and groove with a annual, with a one year review by the planning commission to take comment on if additional uh, buffering uh, is required. The applicant would be opening themselves to having to provide uh, that extra uh, uh, buffering or sound dampening. And it's required that the uh, fenced in area uh, be paved and parking is, is not permitted on the triangle by this. And they provided two parking spaces with inside the fence paved area. Does that help? Yes, yeah. it does. thank you. Does that help you, Paula? Yes, it does. Clarifies okay. that greatly. I just wanted to make sure that we had everything in the motion. Okay. So we have a motion. Do we have a second on that motion? Yeah, Freinberg yeah. seconded it, right? I seconded it, Alan. Okay, I'm yes. sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. That's my, okay. my, it keeps breaking up here, so I'm having trouble hearing. Yeah, I'm getting a flash across my screen that says we were getting interrupted by uh, internet. It a week, yeah. so. Um. All right, we have a motion. We have a second. We have a star here at the city hall, and it's just fine. Yeah, well, we can't get it here. <laughs> <laughs> quit, quit gloating. <laughs> all right, Paula, let's give it a let's give it a vote. Cole Pepper. Yes. Duke Castle. Yes. Apicelli. Yes. Judd. No. Bradenburg. Yes. Giesler. Yes. Step. Motion passes. We will provide uh, 
city council with a write up uh, concerning what the motion is and all the requirements. So they'll have it as clean cut. Just a reminder, you know, city council can uh, amend a special land use uh, uh, conditions and such. So we're going to have another discussion. <laughs> okay. One more step down the road, though. Right. All right. Next item sidewalk seating. We have to. You're very muffled. I think he's moving on to sidewalk seating, the next item on the agenda. Item number five. Outdoor seating. Thank you. Would you like to fill us in on what this is, please? Well, I think uh, Mike has worked primarily on this, and uh, you know, this was uh, this was a conversation uh, well before the the, the city assisted uh, uh, the businesses out there. Uh, so this is to uh, essentially come to an agreement that outdoor seating in the city of Langsburg can work. Uh, that it does need to meet barrier-free requirements for folks that are in a wheelchair to be able to pass by. Uh, it you know takes into account that using uh, you know, parking uh, spaces, uh, you know, is is uh, is allowable for certain periods of time. It's not to be the primary seating for the restaurant, so we don't get, you know, something where the inside's closed and and the seating's only outdoors. So, uh, I I think over time that uh, this has kind of come a long way. Um, I would only ask as a small business owner down there who is. We're currently closed because of COVID, but that when we do reopen um, the tables and stuff that are all at Twilliger's and uh, down the road, that we split them equally between the three businesses. That's all I have. I don't see why that would. Yeah. We do. I think that was the intent them. anyway. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> The intent was to help, intent is to help all open businesses. So when that happens, I'm sure they will get spread out and everything will be considered on how to bury that end off so that cars can't get through and so forth and so on. Definitely take that in consideration. All right, thank you. Um, all right, we have an ordinance. Uh, we need a roll call vote. Did we have a motion? Oh, we need motion I to approve. I do have a question. Hang on, before we go. So speaking of uh, the Twilligers and, and Boondocks area, so in front of Boondocks are the parking, uh, I don't know, barracks, okay? And then you get in front of Twilligers and it's just chains. What is gonna be the setup of the, because I, I thought I heard before that it had to be the barrier. And, and I don't know. The, chief, I the chief is the one that pretty much goes by what we have to go by on that. Okay. I can answer that. There, there is no requirement for barriers. Okay. Um, I, the, the chief of police wanted those barriers there um, as a protector for the people sitting there. Um, I think that if um, we have another establishment that opens up there and wants to use that seating, we can probably move them barriers around a little bit. It just protects people that are because that traffic can come pretty quick right around that corner. But liquor control is really, with that situation, is the one that requires the barrier, but it doesn't have to be what we have there. It just has to be a delineated area. So okay. the chains and stuff, you know, that that was all that liquor control required was something. I mean, it could have been a yarn, I don't know. Okay, and that's, and that's what I remember hearing, Paula, was liquor control and having to have, I thought it said barriers, but define barrier, right? Right, well, it, yeah, it, the barrier was just so that people knew where they were allowed to have alcohol beverages. Gotcha. So they yeah. take them and they can't go in and out of that area through gotcha. there, they have to go through the establishment. The extra was protection for the people sitting there that um, the city provided. Yeah, and I don't disagree with that, coming around that corner. So, and so I, I had no disagreement with any of it, I just didn't understand it. Okay. All right. We well, have if a we motion. need a motion, I'll make the motion that we accept it as it's written to allow the tables of businesses. I will. The way that Paul's got it wrote. I second that. 
We have second, we have a motion. Paula, can we have a vote, please? Hope Pepper. Yes. Newcastle. Yes. Apicelli. Yes. Judd. Yes. Bradenburg. Yes. Diesler. Yes. All set. All right. Do we have any other subjects to discuss this evening? If not, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn, Apatelli. I'll second it. Second that, Judd. Thank you. Thank you. Being adjourned. Thank you. You guys have a good night. Good you night. too, Richard. Thanks for the help. Yep.